Hey, in this video, we're adding a name tag system above our player, just like I have in my game Paints Warfare. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is in this room manager, we are going to make a new UI for setting your name. So let's do that. And let's name this um, name screen. I'll just disable this for now. I'll move this text up a bit. Let's make this say, pick a nice name. And we'll add a new UI. And then input field. And we'll just move this down right here. And we can change the placeholder right here. So we can say, uh, pick a name. And we'll also add a button. And this will just be when we're done. So let's call, let's change this to say join room. Let's make it a nice color. There we go. Okay. Now this looks pretty janky, but obviously you can tweak it in your project. Uh, all right. So in this room manager, we'll add a new public void and we'll call it change nickname. And we'll also add a public void uh, called join room button pressed. And up here, we'll introduce a new private string called nickname. And by default, let's set this to be equal to unnamed. Okay. And in this changed nickname function, we'll take in a string of name and we'll set our nickname to be equal to name. And let's actually put what we have in the start method in this join room button pressed function. Okay. And we have to introduce some more parameters here. So when we've pressed this join room button, we actually want to hide this screen and then show the connection screen. So let's add some parameters for that. Let's add some space. We'll add a public game object called name UI and then a public game object for our connecting UI. Okay. And in this join room button pressed, we'll set name UI, the set active, false. And then we'll do connecting UI, the set active, and we'll pass in true. There we go. Then we actually want to add some parameters to our player setup. So in here, we'll add a new public string for our nickname. And then we'll add a new RPC, so pun RPC, and we'll call it public void set nickname, which will take in a string of our name. And for now, we'll just set nickname equal to this name. Now in our room manager script, when we actually spawn our player, let's do player dot get component photon view dot RPC and we'll call this set nickname RPC. For our targets we'll do RPC target the all and then for our parameters we'll pass in our nickname. Okay. So let's actually reference all this in the inspector. For our name UI, let's drag our name screen in. And then for our connecting UI, we'll drag in this. In this text mesh pro input field, under on value changed, we'll pass in our room manager. 
and we'll select this under this dynamic string, we'll select change nickname. So what this does is when we edit this, it will call this and pass in what we have in this input field as this string right here. Perfect. And under this button, when we click it, we'll pass in our room manager and we'll call the we'll call the join room button pressed function right here. So let's just choose um, Alex or join. As you can see, we connect. Okay. And if we go on our player, we can see that our nickname is now Alex. Now this would sync for all the instances of this being across the network. But you may notice uh, one major thing, and that is that we're missing the actual name tag text. So let's add that. Let's go to our player. So on our player, let's right click, create a 3D object, and then text. And let's move this up a bit, and we can decrease the font size. We can center it. Just position it correctly. Okay. So now we have a text. Let's reference this in our player setup. So we'll add a public text mesh and we'll call it nickname text. And in the set nickname function, we'll set our nickname text dot text to be equal to our nickname. Uh, so this has to be a text mesh pro. Okay. And we'll just drag it in right here. And now this all goes well. We should have a working name tag system. So let's test this out. Okay, let's go in the third person. And um, yeah, this is working very well. Now there is a very slight issue. And if you actually built this, you would actually notice this. And that is that if you look at this text from a different perspective, you won't actually be able to tell like what it says. So what we need to do is make a script that rotates this text to like the main camera. So let's do that. Let's make a new script called face object to camera. And in this update method, we'll do transform the look at camera dot main dot transform. We can delete this. And for good measure, let's build this and just make sure everything's working as intended. So let's suppose this one is Alex and uh, we'll name this guy John. Okay. Fantastic. Alex is in the game. And so is John. Okay. Now we have two issues. One is that the name is actually 180 degrees like in the wrong rotation. All we need to do is create an empty game object. And we'll call it name tag parent and we'll copy this component and paste the position onto our name tag parent like so and just drag our text so drag your text into the name tag parent and we'll offset it by 180 degrees let's remove the face object to camera component from this text and let's add it to the name tag parent like so. So that fixes that issue, but there was also a slightly more subtle issue that you might have not noticed. So in here we have RPC target all. And what this does is it calls this function to all the players that are in the room right now. But what we actually want is for this to be RPC target all buffered. 
So what this does is it saves or buffers this action right here for all of the players that join the room in the future. So if we build and run this, this should definitely work perfectly. So we'll have our friends Alex and then John, of course, playing in a game together. There we go. And this is working fantastically. So they can shoot each other, you know, respawn. Can reload. And this is very sick. Now, just as one bonus tip, let's actually add randomized spawn points to our game. So right now we only have one spawn point. Um, so yeah, let's fix that. Just to visualize this better, let's change, let's delete this and we'll make a cube. And we'll just use these two so we can actually see the spawn points in the map. Uh, make sure to remove the box collider. Okay, so we'll call this spawn points one. And we can just duplicate this and add a few more spawn points. And this will just make the game more interesting. So when we die, uh, we can respawn in different locations around the map. So I'll add four and that should be good enough. In this room manager, we'll change this transform from being one to being a list. And we'll name this spawn points. Then we'll add a local transform and we'll call this spawn points and we'll set this equal to spawn points and for the index we'll do unity engine dot random dot range and for the lower bound we'll do zero and the upper bound we'll do spawn points dot length so we'll pick a random number in between zero and the length of the spawn points. And remember that since these are integers, as you can see here, the max value is exclusive. Okay. Let's drag in our spawn points. And then when we play, we'll spawn at a random point in the map. Now say if you want to hide these spawn points, just for testing purposes, you can disable the mesh renderer. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, enjoy your day, bye.